there's growing evidence that erythritol and similar artificial sweeteners may come at a health cost far more concerning than a few extra calories. So today, we're going to take a closer look at research revealing how these sweeteners are closely associated with increased risk for heart attack, stroke, and other concerns. Can you give us a quick rundown of kind of what these sugar alcohols are and kind of how they're used. They're a type of carbohydrate that have a chemical structure that's similar to sugar. They do naturally occur in foods and are made by the body, but levels that are present are very, very small. But most sugar alcohols are found in packaged foods and are man-made and manufactured. So that's really the issue is that they're ma manufactured in such high volumes. These sugar alcohols obviously sweeten products while reducing calories and they stimulate your tongue's sweet taste buds, which you know adds flavor without the extra calories or sugar. And then food companies also can market them as being low carb, sugar-free, diabetic friendly, without sacrificing the taste of the food product. Dr. Hazen, you mentioned when we spoke ahead of this podcast, your ongoing research on heart disease risk factors didn't start with a focus on artificial sweeteners. Um, your findings just kind of led them. We've been interested in trying to identify what risk factors contribute to heart disease outside of the traditional risk factors. We started to see that some of the compounds in the blood that were predicting future event risk were the very same types of compounds that are used currently as sugar substitutes. And what we found is that these compounds like erythritol or xylitol actually change how our platelets function and makes them more prone to clot and more associated with heightened, what we call thrombosis potential. And a heart attack and stroke is a clot, a thrombotic event. Something like smoking increases risk, but it, it's actually to a lesser extent, believe it or not. What we found for erythritol, for example, is subjects whose levels were in the top quartile, meaning the top 25% of the population, they were at twice the risk for a heart attack, stroke, or death compared to subjects whose level was in the bottom quartile. So what's the best way for them to build a diet that keeps you away from foods loaded up with these artificial sweeteners. A whole foods diet, getting your sugar cravings from things like natural fruit, gotta read labels, ch check what's being added, sitting down with a dietitian, going through your diet, what you're consuming, and the dietitian can specifically provide recommendations that help you break down what you're consuming, highlight the foods that may have those sweeteners, and really focus on healthy swaps to try to limit or avoid them.